What's going on YouTube? I know it's been a minute since I posted a video, um, but this video is a little different. I hope this video actually helps you guys out some. Um, but basically what it is, I recorded a job interview for a front end position. And uh, you know, I've, I, when I was looking for a software job, when I first finished like Code Bootcamp, I didn't really know what software interviews were like. So what I, I would apply to almost everything. As you know, I would apply to almost everything if it said software in it. You know, 10 years experience required for a Java dev. I'm your man. Like, I don't I just want to know what a software thing is like. I know they're different in, in terms of like language and stuff, but I just wanted to know what it was like. All I had experience with was like a couple mechanical engineering, you know, HR. What, how do you deal with a difficult coworker? What is your biggest weakness? Like, nothing like that. And I had heard that you would be whiteboarded and they would ask you technical questions and just kind of quiz you on the spot. And then I've seen a bunch of videos like that. And I'm guilty because I've done those videos. You know, you need to know these four arrays to prepare for a job interview, which are, which are good. The videos are good. But sometimes you can just kind of get stuck in research mode and preparation mode and never actually take action. Um, kind of, you know, people that just say that they're just going to read a book on how to do something and they just stay, like, keep reading books and books and books and they just keep learning about how to do it, but they never actually do it. And you just kind of get paralyzed by that and you just never get anything done. She asked me a few technical questions. I'm sure there are a lot of questions I could have answered better. I'm a human being just like you. I get a little bit nervous when people are kind of asking you questions on the spot. I asked what to prepare for in the emails. They didn't really give me anything. She said, they'll ask you some technical questions. So obviously you're assuming it's going to be whatever the job posting was. Um, and so this was a front end engineer. So uh, it was React and accessibility. So accessibility for people with disabilities. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff for accessibility and I, I've used to do some of that. So that's, you know, it's a pretty niche spot, but you know, it's a good place to be, in, especially as a front end since front end. So competitive as is. So those will be the questions that you'll hear her ask me. Yeah, so I guess that's it. Um, we have a Discord, always hanging out in the Discord, trying to grow the Discord community. Um, basically, it's just about people trying to be better every day, uh, smarter every day, you know, whatever. That, that's kind of what I try to help people do. That's what I'm about, you know. Um, so if you're into that kind of thing, personal improvement, code related, non-code related, be sure to join the Discord. Love to have you, give you a personal welcome, or I try to at least. Um, and if you want to see more videos like this, you want to see the part two, um, you want to see me bomb the whiteboard if they whiteboard me, you know, click that subscribe button and uh, maybe you'll see me uh, bomb an interview. Who knows? You know, I'm the guy making these videos, so I'm supposed to be up there, right? Um, anyways, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy the content. See you in the next video. Any minute now. I'm a little bit nervous, even though it's just an interview, you know? I always get nervous. You want to say the right thing? I think everybody, I think everybody gets a little bit nervous, you know? like when the clock ticks it's been like four seconds after when it's supposed to be you know you're like why aren't they calling so i guess i'll just sit here hope my camera doesn't overheat oh minute late they're a minute late all right hello hello is this josh Clark? yeah is this uh, yes, this is hey how's it going hi how are you today oh uh, pretty good just um it's a good monday it's always a good Monday. How's yours? <laughs> yeah, it's the same Monday for me. Yeah. So you're in uh, California, right? Yes. Uh, I'm always located in California. That's correct. Okay. That's cool. Are, are you like, uh, do you work in the office? Because the position is remote. I'm just curious. Uh, yes. I, I, I'm actually one of the four members. And then uh, I do work in the office. But uh, my hours are pretty flexible. So, yeah. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Oh, um, okay, so the reason for the call is for to, you know, just to let us have a quick and fun chat, and then this is nothing serious yet, just to have a brief idea of uh, what you do, your experience and stuff. Um, can you hear me okay? Um, am I breaking? No, you're fine. Okay? You're, yeah, crystal clear. Okay. Cool. And then, um, how about, let's start with a little introduction. Um, just tell me what you do and then what got you into coding and then your experience something like that oh okay all right uh i've told this story a, a few times before so basically um, i have a mechanical engineering degree got my first job out of college and um, i decided i didn't really like that kind of job you know writing excel and word docs all day it wasn't for me so i went to a code boot camp and i it was a part-time code boot camp it wasn't designed to get you a job or anything like that no job guarantee um, and uh, I, I went there, and that was like, I don't know, four, four months. And I really, I really tried. And I uh, got my first job at a startup. 
the lead front end by like I guess by default everyone does a little bit front end but that's my specialty and that's what I like I'm a visual person um, and that's what I do now I don't know that was kind of a rant um, any questions <laughs> Oh yeah, the government contracting position was all React and PHP, and it was a uh, mainly accessibility based. And I know that's what this job is. So I know it's a pretty niche thing. It's 508 compliance, ARIA attributes, everywhere, screen readers, axe testing, all that stuff. Okay, perfect. Um, do you have experience with front end testing? Um, in what capacity, like unit testing, like TDD? In unit testing. Um, I've done Jasmine very briefly. Um, mostly it's just been manual QA. Tell me a little bit about React. Like, um, what do you like about it? Um, well, basically everything about it is why it's the best. You know, components and it's fast and you have React router, um, state management. Uh, we, don't, we don't have state management currently in the C-sharp application. Um, does that kind okay. of cover everything? And then, um, do you, so you mentioned when you don't have uh, state management, do you have any experience with any sort of state management at all, like Redux? Yeah, Redux with your dispatchers and your actions and all that. Yeah, I've done that. Cool. Okay. Um, could you tell me a little bit about React lifecycle? Um, like, from, like from start to finish? Like deploying a project? Um, you don't have to tell me about like from start to finish, just uh, one or two methods I use like really often. Um, you normally, I guess no one's really asked me this question. That's a good question. So in my opinion, I guess the React uh, life cycle would be I normally start from create React app and then um, I just move on from there for, for whatever it would be and I make sure to have state management um, as soon as I can. So usually I'll grab Redux or I think it comes with Redux now actually um, and that's I mean, until I get to like deployment. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure how to answer the question. That's a good question. Okay. Is All there? Right. Um, do you, is there uh, like a? Yeah. Let me go ahead. Take a example. Do you know the difference between component did update versus component will update? Yeah. So component did update. You're checking to make sure the component loaded on something on some event, and then component will update it when you click something. The component the component will update on that event. So just. Depends on which event you're checking to see if the component changes on. Okay, all right. Um, and uh, tell me a little bit about your accessibility um, experience. Like, um, how would you make, a, let's say, a site or an application more accessible to people with a um, disability? Sure. So, there's different there's different types of color blindness. So, number one, I guess it comes down to the kind of contrasted stuff with the colors. Uh, we used Axe, which is just a, a Chrome extension for accessibility that checks basically everything. And then there was a screen reader uh, Chrome extension that we used, but I don't remember the name. I'm not sure. I think it was an actual program that we had to download, and we basically we ran it on every single page to make sure that all of the uh, ARIA labels were correct and you know uh, understandable to someone uh, with you know visual impairments. really good and then um, tell me about one of your favorite projects like um, for example like a uh, certain functionality or a certain feature that you really really liked and then that was built by you um, like just like a work project or like a personal project it counts like everything counts oh everything counts um, I would say that the reason that I have this job currently was because we did an entire like overhaul of the UI. So I pretty much everything besides the actual like mock-up pages are, were done by me. And it was awesome to see it go from zero to, to hero pretty much. Um, in terms of like functionality, uh, well, it doesn't, so the C-Sharp app doesn't really play well. Um, we, well, it would take too long to implement React. So what I've been getting to do is play around with jQuery a lot. I know that's old, and I know it's outdated, um, but just like really diving into how it works has been really fun for me. Um, kind of dismantling Bootstrap, seeing how Bootstrap, uh, the JS file that comes with Bootstrap works, 
and kind of modifying it to do what they want. Um, since the application is a little bit antiquated uh, in terms of like the technology stack, I've had to kind of dive into how older stuff really works. Um, do you want more specifics than that? Or does that sound OK? That's OK. Um, and then um, if you have given a second chance to redo one of your projects or one of the parts in the projects that you mentioned, um, what would it be? And how would you want to do it? I would, well, if I had given a second chance, so I can't start from, I can't take the project and start from scratch. Um, so I would say for the PHP and React job, we implemented Redux way too late, and so I would go back and add that first thing. Um, that was kind of a pain, oh. getting that set up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. Um, but yeah, I understand how it goes, though. Um, there are countless projects that I had to um, strip away a lot of the old parts and then implement it in React again, and it, it is truly painful. With all the uh, versioning and stuff, it's just really hard to handle, mm. and then try to get um, okay, all right. Um, let me tell you a little bit about the projects that is coming your way if you are getting on board with us. So we are working with, uh, have you ever shopped there before? Yeah, of course. Okay, so you know how their site is and you know how it works, right? So um, basically they're an e-commerce site and they're trying to sell a lot of stuff that's our usual um, uh, impression of Etsy. But I think they are trying to implement, they're trying to integrate with the Garmin project, which is related to um, making the site or application that they want to build more accessible to veterans and then people with disabilities, et, uh, like, et cetera. So basically, um, they're looking to build up two parts, uh, one and the other one. So they're just trying to boost their existing user experience um, and then build out some new features when they're trying to integrate with this government program that they're trying to um, uh, implement. So that's why we need a front end accessibility engineer, but also have React experience because this project is going to require React knowledge. So it looks like, it sounds like to me that you have both of the experience we're looking for. So um, that's really great. And um, yeah, this project is going to be a six month long at least, and then currently we're still trying to gather team members. This is going to be a pure front end um, project, so you are going to be working with a, another front end engineer from Apple and then also a project, uh, project manager from Apple. So you guys are going to form your own little group and then work probably um, six months on this, and then you're going to have daily check ins, you're going to have um, Story management, management, and then all the good stuff. And then uh, you guys will also need to check in with the team, like um, weekly, I would say, check in with your project manager and the check in. And then due to this project is still in a uh, project uh, management, uh, project managed state, so we don't have access to COVID yet, and then we don't know how it looks yet. Um, yeah, so this is a little bit about the project. Do you have any questions regarding this? Um. So as far as the project, um, not really the specific project. I was going to ask, but you answered that question. I guess I just have some questions about the actual, like the company. Um, it seems like a pretty small company a little bit. I've read a lot about it. I did a lot of research on it. Um, um, so it seems like a pretty fresh company, pretty new company. Um, how many people do you have on right now? Because I guess I got an email from her, but I didn't see her anywhere. Yeah, she is our HR, and then she handles all of the new applicants, and then she handles um, a lot of just HR stuff. Like, if you have to call in sick, if you have to um, make arrangements for vacations, she's there for us. And then she is not on our site yet, and then she will be pretty soon. Um, so, yeah, we are a pretty new company. So I started working at ABBA when they are just a two-person team when there was just Robin Travis. And then um, that was in 2016. Actually, it was funny, is I graduated from a, a boot camp too. So right after the boot camp, this is my actually first job. And then I worked my way all the way to now. And then I watched the company grow in so many levels. So right now we have four core team members and then we are all on-site members, and then the rest of our team, they're actually all remote. So we 
don't have, a lot of them are site yet because um, most of them, some we have to ask for an opinion for you to put you on the website. And then a lot of them, they're contractors, and we actually they don't belong to us, so we cannot put them on the site. So, um, yeah. And then um, for remote members, I think we right now we have about 15 to 20 people working on different projects. So, for example, I am working currently working on also with the government working on to renew the out of date government site. You know how government sites are, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's just links within links, and then you just have to click through, click through them, and then you're there sitting in front of a computer all day, and then you don't know where you're going. So we're basically trying to change that. And then I'm glad they're trying to change that. So I'm working with, and then I've been working on this project for three months now. And it's been going wonderful. So you have to work with other people. But it's also great. It's a whole new different um, experience. And then um, it actually is, you know, um, practices a lot of communication skills. Like when all of your remote, uh, all of your team members are remote, so you sort of have to check in with them constantly, like lacking them about questions you have, like answering their questions, things like that. So it's been really fun. The people, like all the devs there, I'm still best friends with. Like we're still, we, well, they had to close like the official Slack channel. So we made our own Slack channel and now we're still there talking every day. So. I know, I know what that's like, yep. even though you don't have to like be in person to like kind of know how someone is, but it's always cool when you do meet him. I think I met him at the position. I mentioned you said it was six months, right? Yeah, so this, uh, this position is turning contract, but there is a possibility that we're going to hire um, someone from the contract team to be a director. That's all happening in the future. I'm not sure. Um, just saying there is a possibility. So yeah, that's what I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. So let me tell you um, what's going to come forward. We're going to arrange the next upcoming challenges um, if you, if everybody likes you. And then um, you're going <laughs> to jump into two tech challenges, I think. So you're going to have a homework challenge, and then you're going to have a in-person work Skype challenge. And then after that, it's just we making offers to arrange to tell you a lot more specific about the project. Um, on what you will be doing and stuff like that. And then I will, yeah, and then you're done. You're hired. That's it. Yeah, cool. It sounds cool. I mean, I really like the whole idea of working on different projects, different technologies, kind of it's a surprise all the time. Keeps you, I don't know, like the cutting edge of everything because you have to with that many projects. So it sounds really cool. I look forward to it. Excellent. Um, it was nice, uh, nice talking to you, Joshua, and then I hope I'll see you soon. Okay, um, should I expect an email in like maybe a, a, a week or a few days or? That I actually have no idea because um, she's really tight on schedule right now. So be patient for about a week mm -hmm. and then um, we'll go from there. I think it takes her probably the most a week to respond to you. Okay, yeah, I'll follow up in a week then for sure. Cool. Thanks so much for your time. Uh, have a nice day. These are the types of questions that you get just for like a phone screening. It's a little bit technical, nothing too technical. It's hard for her to whiteboard me over the phone. All I, although I have inter had interviews like that where they basically, they made me screen share and then I had to be on the phone on speakerphone at the same time. So they were watching my screen and listening and asking me questions on the phone. I, I like my job and my boss is the best. So she knows that I'm making this video. She thought it would be cool um, and ballsy but I hope this doesn't like ruin the rest of my career for, you know, are you just going to make another video with this? Like, I don't know. I don't think it should be kept behind the scenes. You can tell people to prepare all day, but until you see what one is really like, how do you know what it's like? So that's what this is for. Anyways, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, join the discord link for the discords in the description below. Got any questions, comments, ideas, thought I could have answered better. I stuttered a little bit. Um, I goofed on some questions there that I should probably know. Be friendly, upbeat, happy, show the excitement in your voice. That's what I tried to do. I do that more on the phone than I do for these YouTube videos. Oh, that's funny shit. Okay, all right guys, that, that is enough for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it's informative. Um, good questions, good answers. 
Let me know what you think. Love to hear back. Join the Discord. And I will see you guys in the next video.